Yes, indeed. Another episode of Rip and Riff coming at you here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm. To my right, if you're looking at the screen, at Mr. Jared Moore on Twitter. Same guy, Jared Moore. I'm at Puckin' Thoughts, Adam Bernard. Jared, how are we doing on this uh, mid-December Saturday? Uh, well, I think you'll be doing a lot better once I actually remember to mute my speaker here so you're not hearing an echo. But uh, I will be doing uh, Yeah, I, I'm doing wonderful. You know, it's the middle of December. It's Christmas time. The fantasy football playoffs are basically here uh i'm very excited as uh you know the uh the manager of uh two teams that are looking to go back to back so uh one of them uh, would be at your expense if that uh is uh, if i could do anything about it <laughs> so uh look i mean so, some of us just build a, a a monster that's just seam rolls through the season but you know it, it's it's it doesn't mean a thing without that ring it's like the uh you know the 2007 new england patriots now, speaking of the Patriots, and it is close to Christmas, the holidays is about friends and family. So, you know, let, let's bring, you know, let's bring a friend in to rip some packs today. How about that? Even if he is a dirty Patriots fan and Red Sox fan. I mean, uh, well, I, I was oh, d- don't for, don't forget the Celtics and Bruins who are actually good right now. You bring up the, of course, you bring up the two teams that are garbage right now. Instead of the, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of banners back there. All right, gang. There is a lot. You, you, you know, I've I've been studying all the memorabilia behind you, Coop, and uh, I think my favorite uh, little piece you have behind in there is the uh, the one from the uh, from the 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 snow game, uh, the tug rule game. Oh uh, yes. That, 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 oh, that so you can is, right. Yep, that is that the the snowball. Yep, the snowball game. There's the uh, the Pedro Martinez there, Marcus Smart, RIP. So my favorite one back there is well, he's the not one dead. He's just not in the Celtics anymore. He's dead to <laughs> dead to me. <laughs> Although Porzingis has been playing great, so I guess we're all right. I'm still rooting for Marcus Smart, but the the this one here right is from ro- the day they retired Robert Parrish's uh, his yes the chief right. And if you look closely, there's an autograph there. That starts with the name starts with R and P, right? And and people just assume that it says Robert Parrish. But if anybody looks closely or knows what it actually says there, I was at that game as a kid and tried to get Robert Parrish to sign it. And I reached down and who grabs it but the coach of the team at the time? And he autographed it. Rick Patino. Rick Patino. <laughs> Shout out to so, baby. Shout out. So that is a Robert Parrish Day banner autographed by Rick Patino. So uh, a little bit of a fake RP autograph on that one. Baby. Wow. It's nice to have a family friendly uh, Rick Patino story on the show for once. We could go in a whole lot of different directions with him that uh, we won't. But, uh, you know, that's a, that's a really good story. <laughs> I've, I've never owner. heard a coach chew out a team. So me and you remember Stephen Nichols back at Sirius XM, Jared? Yeah, the, uh, of course, of course. One of the nicest people on the planet. So we, you know, St. John's stunk. So you, we got like courtside seats for like 50 bucks and they were playing Louisville. And, and by St. we, John's, you guys, I didn't go. No, it was me and Stephen Nichols. And St. John's somehow was beating him, had no business beating him. And man, we were on, on the Louisville side and he was just, uh, I've, I, the, yeah, I've, I haven't heard a coach give it to a team like that in a very long time or since. So he's a nasty, nasty fella. Have you ever heard the last interview he ever did in boston with the sports hub it was very short yes i think i do vaguely recall that yeah no but i mean it's something i'll probably pop up i can google after the show it was yeah yeah the short and sweet going out of the way for because i can imagine oh it is very very if you can find it it is very very short and sweet so yeah i believe that listen this is the age of the internet everything's uh, you know once it's on the internet it's there forever yeah, so pull that one up, dude. And I honestly, I while you're while you're looking for that, I'll tell you this. Uh, I was with Toucher and Rich. That was the interview. Uh, Toucher, the Toucher and Rich show. Fred Toucher did the interview himself. Uh, but I'll tell you this. I just wanted to say I'm so fired up to be on the show. I hadn't opened a pack of cards in a decade, dude. And I watch you guys open them, and it gets me fired up. I know John and Pemba. Uh, he is you know big into it. And I went out and got some cards, man. And I am so amped to open these cards that I even. Uh, like two weeks ago, I had two packs, opened one just because I was fired up. So, I mean, I can go through some of those, but I got these ones right here. I've been looking at them since you guys told me to come on the show. I was like, nice. And then I just been looking at these cards, trying not to open them every single day while they're here. So I'm fired up to do this show, man. This is really cool. Hey, now, it's cool. interesting because you told me you were getting the Panini Mosaics, uh, the, uh, the Panini Mosaic cards for 2023. And uh, I didn't have the heart to tell you that uh, I also uh, have the Panini Mosaic. Oh, look at us, dude. So, 
<laughs> did we just become best friends? I think we did. I think we got to do a showdown here where Adam Bernard uh, kind of decides who who's the winner, who has the better cards, you know? There's a reference I can make right now that's probably not very family friendly. Remind me to tell you later what I wanted to call you guys right there, but I cannot. Do. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Save that one for off the we'll air. We'll save that one for off yeah. the air. But, uh, uh, well, well, so they, they've showed what they're going to be uh, ripping today. Here's what I'm ripping here. We're going to go with uh, a pack of uh, 2021 Panini Absolute Football 20 card value pack. Find three uh, green parallels on average. And the one pack thing that all three of our packs do have in common is that we can win a chance to be the kid reporter at the Super Bowl. So that's what we're really yeah, after baby. today. It's not rookie cards. It's not, you know, parallels. It's not inserts. It is the chance for the one. Well, I can't win. It's too late for me. But these guys could win a chance to be a kid Please. reporter. Please. Please. Right. Yeah. I mean, who, who's that guy who's always on those Nickelodeon NFL broadcasts? Young Dylan? He ain't got nothing on me. All right. No like, I, I will. I will ask all the tough questions. And uh, by all the tough questions, I mean all the really stupid questions that, uh, you know, a 12 year old can get away with because that's the level of education that I have. That's how it goes, dude. I mean, that's the thing, though. What's like the number one kid question? Like, what's your favorite food? Like, what's yeah, the one, what's yeah. your favorite food? Or uh, uh, I don't know. What, what are kids into these days? Fortnite? I have no idea. Yeah, something like that. Also depends and, on the age, too, you know? And based on I follow a lot of these guys on social media. Trust me, plenty of these NFL guys are playing Fortnite and all those games. It's Juju Smith Schuster is doing the dances and stuff. So. They get along with these kids. Well, it's a good thing that Juju Smith Schuster is working on that and not, you know, uh, the, his craft, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 actually I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to keep twisting the knife with the Patriots, but we deserve it. We deserve it. We've had our parades. I actually did ask Coop a couple of weeks ago. I said, in Dynasty, is Juju Smith Schuster droppable? That's how far he's fallen. Like, I in, in the league we're in together, Jared, like, I actually thought about, like, cutting him right. out. Like it's, and yeah, and it's, these these are super deep leagues where like nobody's available. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, what is he doing for me? He's like, getting. I, me I actually picked points. up Jalen Rager a couple weeks ago in that in that league. And that's what I'm telling you. The thing is, it's like if he's not going to be good, and this is what I said for Marquez Valdez Scantling for a while, which is like another guy who stinks. <laughs> he played and he played with a back to you know four time MVP, back to back MVP, and then he played with Patrick Mahomes. Like, when is that player going to be good? Right? If Juju couldn't figure it out with Patrick Mahomes, when is that player going to be good? And obviously, right now, he's not good at all. So, you know, with some of those guys, it's right. I know he's still young and he came in the league really young, but probably okay to cut bait. Now, in fairness to Mar uh, MVS, it's very tough to catch like a 40 yard pass when a guy is climbing on your back as you're doing it in the closing seconds of the Sunday night football game. But that's neither here nor there. So, um, Coop, we usually ask our guests, do you want to kick or receive? You know, do you want us to go first, kind of see the flow? You're familiar with the show. So uh, you're the guest. We'll kind of give you the option. But I am going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to the second half. I'd like to see what you guys are working with, get with the flow, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll rip mine. Then I think Adam should probably go first since Coop and I are basically doing the same exact cards. Yeah, I was going to say that way I can properly judge the packs, you know, back to back versus being a gap. So we'll, we'll go chronologically here. We'll go 2021 uh, absolute mini football, 20 cards here in the uh, big old cello pack. And uh, dude, yeah. This is great. I'm going to fire it up. Let's go, baby. All right. So first in the pack here. A guy who we're talking about guys who just cannot have any success in flame that will fuller the fifth. Oh, oh, geez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, don't even, I don't even know what he's up to now. Now, this is a guy that I know Coop was big on in one league for sure was Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Awesome, man. I will say one thing about Will Fuller real quick before we move on that a lot of guys, when you see them, especially in Dynasty for me, the moment a guy gets bought for steroids, I immediately put them the red flag around them because there's been a bunch of times where we see guys on steroids doing well and the moment they they stop with the peds they kind of they really go down vincent jackson and antonio gates to a certain degree so will fuller another one of those guys right right he was an acl guy too right and he like apparently the last injury he had was a like he injured his finger and i don't mean to be graphic but they said that this spiral fracture of his finger basically his finger was like shards like a, like just a bag I, full of shards i didn't even so, know you could spiral fracture a finger because the bone is so thin like that's what they yeah. said is that his finger was just like had to be completely reconstructed so i don't know you know but yeah surprised he never got another shot but what are you gonna do so not a great card but not a great Stephon, card but hey, diggs great play on diggs good card right there and the, you know just the look of the overall cards cards too i like with the border and then you know it's a good action shot there of diggs 
Now, something Jared and I have talked about on this show, that's not more of a thing, and we want to make it more of a thing. The We have the rookie card, but we don't have the last card. Here's Ben Roethlisberger's last card from that year. Ooh, look at that, dude. That there was when, yeah. Uh, so that was when he, his, I call that the, the Ben Roethlisberger volleyball era, where his, uh, his, every snap would come back to him and he would get out of saying so quick, it was almost like volleyball. Like his, his time to release was so much faster than exactly just right to, right to Deontay Johnson. His time to release was so much faster than any other quarterback. It was wild those last two years there. Yeah. Well, Adam, if it makes you feel any better, you have Ben Roethlisberger's last card. You also have Will Fuller's last card. There you go. Good point. Now we got a few quarterbacks back to back. We got a bunch of quarterbacks in a row here. This is going to be a good pack. The Drew Locke, not so much. I mean, he yeah. did get traded for Russell Wilson. That's his claim to fame. Pretty he was nice the quarterback man. throw in there. Now we got Matt Stafford, who's doing all he can. And this looks like one of those green parallels here based on the bottom there. Uh, Stafford, you know, got the Rams going there. They may, I don't know if they make the playoffs, but uh, they've certainly hung around longer than a lot of people thought they would. Right. And he, uh, I, mean, I will say, <laughs> go ahead, Coop. I was just going to say, Super Bowl winner, like, when, when do you retire? Like, now we're caught up. We are always caught up in the moment. But those cards, when you're a Super Bowl winner and Super Bowl MVP, they they age a little more gracefully. Although I think Cooper Cup might have been MVP of that Super Bowl. He was the MVP of that Super Bowl. In fact, I have a card that I pulled on a previous episode that actually said on the bottom, like, Super Bowl MVP. It was one oh, of the nice. mini prisms for, you know, that following season. But, yeah, I mean, they might make the playoffs. But if you look at that Packers schedule down the stretch, that they play nobody down the stretch. Yeah, they, so. they could win out very easily. Uh, guy here that's now in the booth for CBS on Sunday is Mr. Matt Ryan. Ooh, nice, dude. I, it would have been nice to see him get one. It's just the problem was because he's a he's a Boston College guy, so you know, even though Boston College doesn't matter, still root for those guys a little bit. Of and yeah, just a shame. I, even as a Patriots fan, as crazy as it is, like in the aftermath, I hated the twenty eight and three jokes and all that stuff because it was like you know we have Super Bowls. That was his one chance. Julio Jones's one chance. Like you don't gotta throw that much salt in the wound. Saints fans are allowed to do it. I'd say. Absolutely. I, I didn't oh, like of course. Yeah. If yeah. you're a rival, I didn't like, absolutely. Well, that's the thing is it, I, I feel like Dutch stuff should have been more for Saints fans than for Patriots fans because, you know, you don't got to punch down like that. You, 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 you did what you did and you didn't, you don't have to remind them again and again of it, you know? Uh, now, Jalen Hurts here. Certainly, that's a great little pull out of this pack. We we're about halfway in here. Nice. Now, these are base cards. We're looking for, uh, you know, we want the, some sort of uh, insert or something like that. And we got a couple of defensive studs coming up here. Uh, a highlight on an otherwise crappy season, Quinn and Williams. He's doing his thing. You cannot blame him for the Jets' problems this year. Uh, at defense. least, he, at least he wants to play, which is more than we can say about uh, maybe Zach Wilson right about now. Uh, by the way, go back to that Jalen Hurts card for a second. He he had number two on his jersey there. Hmm? Yeah, I mean that's not his normal number. So uh, that, no, he changed. must have switched it at some point. Yeah, guess he switched. Uh, Quinn. Quinton and Quincy Williams, by the way, can you find a better brother pairing in the NFL right now? I mean, listen, I know Jason and Travis are probably more popular, but in terms of productivity, Quinny and Quinson, Qu oh, Quincy and Quinnon, let's try and say their names right. Uh, Miles Garrett here, doing what he can to keep the Browns alive. Monster. Should be the defensive player of the year. Right. Maybe even, like, is, if he just play, even if he's not as productive, if he could just play through this, I think he's good. Through the shoulder. Uh, a fun little uh, Miles Garrett story. Uh, we had him on Radio Row at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. I didn't get his number, but I have his dad's number saved on my phone. So oh, uh, if, uh, if you ever need a hookup with you know, Papa Garrett, I got you. If you want to text him a screenshot of this card, if he wants it, I'll send it to him. Um, <laughs> all right. So we got DJ Chark here, who is uh, not. It's a green uh, you know, parallel here. Not done well with the Panthers this year, but a uh, good looking card there. Back from the yeah, Jaguars. It's not really his fault. Yeah, exactly. Got to, let's see. We got a rookie card here, but uh, not a rookie we would want. Sage Surratt, wide receiver from the Lions. Yeah. yeah. That's day, three, day three pick. I mean, you never know, but you, the, those guys, they need to carve out playing time pretty quick to uh, to not get shuffled around in the practice squad and the uh, and the journeyman tag, you know? No, you know It'll be Puka Nakua, which, by the way, I suppose we should thank you, Coop, for uh, – uh, turning sauna puka nakua before the fact so uh so there you go i wish we win i we, we do this all the time where i look back it's always way too late when i look back and say man we could have bought those cards whatever was available i'm sure that's the stock on cards and stuff like that but i mean 
you could have bought them for nothing, you know. Well, but yeah. how many times do people go out and buy a bunch of players? I, I try and warn people of that, right? Like this off season, I tweeted out. I was like, the people that have the people that are drafting a ton of Isaiah Hodgins probably have a uh, an attic full of Travis Fulgham cards, right? <laughs> you got to be very <laughs> – people did not like people did not like that tweet, but you got to be very careful investing in cards and players, uh, you know, especially in this environment. I, that's why I always tell people when people ask me what jersey to buy of their favorite NFL team, I say very first thing you should do, buy a, a jersey of a retired player. Correct. Your first – for your first jersey, yeah. get like a Ben Coates if you're a Patriots fan, right? Or Tom Brady. Second, if you're going to buy an active player, wait till he signs a se- his second contract. Correct. Wait till he signs a second contract. A guy like Devin McCourty or Matthew Judon right now. Like, you know what? Like, get something that you're not going to regret because you know, things can change really quick. You, you, yeah. you don't want to <laughs> ask for like a Mark Messier Liberty jersey for your 14th birthday and only to have him watch him to go to Vancouver a few months after that. You know, that, that you don't want that to happen. You know, I named well, well, my I named my cat Curtis Martin. He got traded to the Jets, dude. I had a cat yeah, named Curtis I, Martin I, on the other team. I mean, we probably all have bad, you know, buying jersey stories like that. Like uh, I bought a PK Subban Devils jersey once he got traded to the team. <laughs> like I, I didn't know he was washed up by then, even though he had three years left. And like, I mean, like at least PK Subban's like a fun player, a fun yeah. personality where like he's easy to root for, he's easy to like. But like I didn't know he was fucking washed. Big charity guy too. Subban's a good guy, you know. Even at, yeah. I. If if I'm as a Bruins fan saying I respect him after all his years in Montreal, in Montreal then you're yeah. then you then everyone can have respect for that guy. I like Subban. I like an I like him as a player. I like as an analyst. His bit where like he's like doing stuff like you know when you know when like they go to the studio for the tease for the intermission show and he's like doing his dance or like he's like I, that stuff annoys me. Other than that, I really like. Him. See, I like that because Mark Messier can't stand it. And That's I the one saving grace. Is like. Messier wants to just wring his neck. Like, what are you doing? Like, stop it. And then, yeah. Well, I, and, and Messier will always have the, well, I have Stanley Cup rings. Like, what do you have? You know, a Norris trophy? Not just one. <laughs> what, five, six, six rings? Um, as, six a player, rings. as a player, I will say the one thing that drove me nuts with him was when he would sit there at the blue line and just smack his stick on the ice. Just give me the, the give me the puck, stick on the ice thing, dude. Not moving, not doing anything. Just sitting there oh, going, yeah. send it to me, right? It's like the I, player equivalent I, of the fan that yells shoot. Right. <laughs> For sure, hundred percent though. Now, if one sage, <laughs> if one sage Surratt was rookie wasn't enough. Here's two. Oh, oh, green, yeah. I get the green power in that. So there you go. So Loaded Sage Surratt, if your parents are out there, give me a call. We'll send you the cards. You got um, the market market cornered on those, brother. Yeah, well, I'm gonna put those on a penny sleeve. Um, Akeem Hicks here, and uh, you know, good defensive uh, lineman when he was with the Bears. Cool little hero series, but not really much now. I know he's with the Raiders now. Um, now we're gonna get to some real rookie cards here. Oh boy, we're gonna have a few. All right, so first we've got Rashad Bateman in the introduction series with his uh, Minnesota jersey there. It's okay. a good looking one. And jury's still out, I think. I think we. I'm not. I'm not willing to call it just yet on Bateman. I'm not willing to call it on him yet either. That's why he's going to go in a penny sleeve just in case. Sneak him in. All right, now we got. Jay, you know, he's done for the year, but I mean, when he plays, hell of a defensive end, Jalen Phillips. Oh yeah, that's a good. That one. was rough seeing him go down with the torn Achilles the other week. So yeah, that was just brutal to see. Especially because he almost he almost didn't play he he quit football. Did you guys ever hear that story? No. In, in college, he he at suffered. UCLA, right? Or he he started somewhere and went to UCLA, or vice versa, or something like that. He started somewhere, suffered a concussion, really uh, did not do well with it. Almost was going to quit and do music. I guess he's also like a, a DJ and does and he's really good at it. So he almost quit to do music, and they convinced him to come back and play. And then, of course, he gets drafted in the first round. First round pick, right? And if yeah. you draft, so. I think so. Yeah, Cra- crazy how close some of these guys come to uh, to hanging them up, and then comes right back in and look at them now. Also played college at Miami and UCLA. If you could pick two better colleges to go to with to play football when you're in your late teens, early twenties, I mean, man. especially if you're a DJ, dude. I yeah, mean, no like you know, <laughs> being a DJ in LA and Miami. No wonder he's like, hey, maybe I'll just do this. <laughs> if the football thing doesn't work out, it's okay. It's okay. I, 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 I'm getting paid a lot of money on Fridays and Saturdays at the club, so. Uh, a couple, a few more rookies to go through. We'll blow through a couple of them quick. Jermar Jefferson from the Lions. Uh, then we got uh, Chauncey Golston from the Cowboys. But we're going to close. We're going to get increasingly better as we close here. Quiddy Pay from the Colts. Oh, nice. I like that one. And we got uh, Mr. Travis Etienne. Quiddy Pay was Penn State or Michigan? Quiddy Pay was Michigan. 
Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Um, then we got a Travis ATN rookie card. Yeah. Now, uh, now we're talking. Weird. Now we're talking. And then lastly, to close out the deck here, let me just get Travis protected here. We want to make sure that it's not ribbed for his pleasure. It's smooth. And then we got Justin Fields rookie oh, card. Yeah, buddy. Let's go, dude. Well, That's going to be great when he's on the Saints next year. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be just fine, man. They The problem is that the the Panthers losing is really putting them in a tough spot because – the pick is gonna the pick they're getting back. They're gonna get the number one pick through the Panthers. The one pick and and they're gonna have to take the quarterback. And it's just they, just to get him on a rookie deal. It could I mean, be. Yeah, I think so. I think you got to reset because you. you I mean, Eberflus isn't gonna be there next year either. They're they're gonna clean house. You would think, right? Oh, it's been a disaster over there, man. I mean, like coach, the, even the very strange incidents going on with the coaches he hired and stuff. You know, like right. Very, so you bring, very weird. You, so you bring an entirely new regime, a new regime that didn't draft Justin Fields. They get the number one pick. They get to, you know, reset and take their guy. I mean, and like you'll get something for Justin Fields. Like it won't be like a first round pick, but you can get like a set, you know, a day two pick for him. And I wouldn't be probably. surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a first or second, uh, late first. So, you know, it. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo went for a second. You know what I mean? Drafted yeah. for a second, went for a second. Right. So. And there's I just so many teams crazy. that need a quarterback. Yeah. What did Josh Josh Rosen got traded for like a second when Something uh, like that. yeah. After, I mean they the, gave up on him after year one, but yeah. Yeah. There's definitely people out there on the league that have their own scouting folder, right? And they've watched the tape and they said, you know, just like the just like uh my ex girlfriends back in the day, I can fix him. You know, like <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see. I just think I actually think Fields you can fix though. Like I, I don't think, think so. he's a bad player. So right, the right uh, system. Yeah. Yep. I just think it's funny that they basically made the decision like, all right, Fields is going to be our guy. We're going to make the trades to get him, and then they're going to end up in a position where they're going to get a franchise quarterback anyway. It's just like. Yeah, they failed upwards. You so. failed upwards. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's to... people we know in this field that we can could, could say they did that as well. But Yeah, well, speaking of failing upwards, I'm about to rip open this pack of cards. So there we go. Let's, nice let's transition. Go. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> all right. Here we so, go. Uh, Yep, we'll start here. Uh, kid reporter, we'll start... kid reporter, kid reporter, kid reporter. That's uh, what no, we're no, after, no, folks. No, we're kid... well, what, what, what are the terms with this kid reporter, anyways? Is it like an actual card? Or you have to put like a code in, or I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could read on one of your packs while I'm looking this up, Coops. Yeah, I'll check it out, thing. dude. But uh, we start with uh, you know one of the players on the New York Giants who doesn't suck, Dexter Lawrence. There we go. Yeah, of a man there on the defensive line. So I, as somebody that doesn't know much about these cards, about cards in general, I know a lot about mm -hmm. football, but not about cards. I like, I really like the look of these mosaic cards. You know, oh, I've seen all gorgeous cards. Yeah, Panini just... mosaics like the gold standard, pretty much of like the okay. look of the cards. Yeah, like they're there's a reason why they are what they are per pack or per box. Uh, right, so, so it says. Oops, sorry, I was gonna <laughs> go say. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Access codes can be found in select packages of Panini NFL trading cards. So it looks like you get. A uh, you get a, a special card that has an access code. Then you go to PaniniKidReporter.com and put in your access code and your email. And then uh, you know the looks like you have to be between seven and thirteen years old. And it doesn't have so if one of us finds one, then you know I know you got a, like I don't have a kid that's eligible, so I'll have to uh, uh, maybe I have nephews. You know uh, one of them could do it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So we'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll finagle that somehow. Uh, unfortunately, the this player got hurt the uh, the other day. Uh, but uh, from your New England Patriots, from Andre Stevenson. Oh, dude. What do you guys think about the hip drop tackle? Do you think it's possible to uh, to get it banned, or we're just gonna have to deal with it? It's gonna take time. I mean, I it's, think there's it, a long it, list of other things that need to be banned along with that. So uh, you know that the tush push. Um, I, I'm very anti tush push. So. I feel it. it's, it's going to be an annoying transition period when, you know, guys get tackled for that. It's, you know, it's going to be like any other time they try to get something out of the game. It's going to have its period. It starts. Yeah. You're going to have to start it with the young kids and then they learn it all the way up. Like the, it took a while for the horse collar to be really something that people weren't doing by, by instincts, you know? Uh, you think they're going to ban the tush push after the season, after the Eagles win the Super Bowl doing it? Sure. It's, it's hard to say. I, you know what? The, there's a golden opportunity right now for the Giants to go out and run the tush push until Tommy DeVito gets hurt and then use that as the example, right? I think the Giants need to fall on that sword and just have Tommy DeVito go down to a, to a tush push I don't, injury. Uh, sacrificial lamb. The sacrificial I don't know that, lamb. 
I don't know that we can sacrifice our sweet uh, Italian boy Tommy DeVito. Um, That's true. You know, Such an it, angel. It, it, yeah, I mean he's. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to give him? His mom's already making him homemade cutlets and sausage like, and, potato and peppers. Right. So, like, you know, like, like, I yeah. can't go from cooking. I That's mean, true. and I, I don't, I mean, I know uh, Tyrod Taylor just returned to practice. I don't want to do that to him either after he had his lung That's punctured. True. So, um, shout out I mean, Chargers uh, team doctor. Just yeah, have to let it happen. Yeah. Matt Barkley might have to fall on the sword on this one. I think um, that's fair. Uh, George Kittle uh, from your San nice. Francisco 49ers. Very nice. Uh, very nice card here. Hall of Fame card of uh, Randy Moss with his gold jacket. Damn. You don't see a lot of gold jacket cards. That's cool. That yeah, is this cool. Is a very cool card. I'm yeah. very happy with this one. I like that. Uh, we got a rookie State card. Only one of the greatest quotes of all time, by the way. Uh, a rookie card here of uh, Jack Campbell from the Detroit Lions. Stud. Nice. Wow, dude, my, I'm in trouble. This you're pulling, you're pulling some nice ones. I'll tell you the, the and one I got pack five more I, packs after this. <laughs> I was just saying the one pack. So those come six to a pack, yours or how many? Yeah, six to a pack. Okay. And I got six packs total. And last but not least, uh, we have a uh, touchdown masters, uh, uh, Geno Smith. But for some reason, he has the big head like uh, every video game from the late 1990s. Oh, so they're doing that. like a NFL blitz, big head, cheat code. I guess like uh, NBA Jam, uh, Go I know Goldeneye had the big head cheat as well. A bunch of video games uh, back in the day did. How do you feel about that on, on a card? Check codes. Um, I don't mind it just because it's something different. Um, you know, I, I I like a little variety just to mix things up. As long as it's not like on every card. Oh baby, uh -oh. oh baby! I have not seen Jared react like that. Oh man. baby! Of R and R. Here we go. What you got, got the kid reporter card. Show it up, dude. We're going, bro. Yeah, we're going to the Super Bowl, baby. Oh. We're going. Let's uh, I probably go. should put a code on screen, though. Although by the by the by the time uh, yeah, come this that episode airs, we'll redeem it, or I'll, I'll find a way to have blur it cool, out. You could leave. You lost. It's over. Wow. It's over. I got smoked, man. You. This has been a setup. This is a complete setup. You had that stack of cards. You you probably opened seven hundred packs. You had that pack of. That stack of you these know, are all pulled, sealed, baby. I mean, uh, you're I'm, using, I'm using the box cutter to open these up. Yeah, yeah, I watched. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, kid report. I watched yeah. It. You pulled the Randy Moss card, and the next card is going to be a Tom Brady card. This whole thing was a setup from the start. Uh, <laughs> right church, wrong pew. Because here's Peyton Manning. Wow, oh, wow. Look at that dude. That was a uh, nice. Pick. Yeah, that was a nice pack. Uh, but we'll go through this pack pretty quickly. Uh, Christian Kirk from the Jacksonville Jaguars. This point, uh, uh, Tariq Woolen from the uh, uh, Seattle Seahawks. I don't know why I couldn't think of the team for a second there. Stud good, cornerback last good year, good player. Yeah. yeah, I think he's still a good player. Uh, rookie card here, player who probably should be used a lot more than he is. Uh, Marvin Mims from the uh, Denver Broncos. That's a rookie. That's what the rookie cards look like for this. Well, the, yeah, it's for some subtle. reason, they, they went with RC the. Uh, yeah, for some reason, they went with this layout. But uh, this is what the rookie card looks like, at least for the NFL debut. Yeah, I want to see more of him. Peyton basically said that because of the skill set overlap with Jerry Judy, he has a hard time getting him on the field at the same time, which is why you're seeing, quote unquote, little Jordan Humphrey, who's 6'4, 225. I think, you know, it's just a matter of you got to have, you got to have a balance of what type of players are out there. So I wouldn't give up on Marvin Mims just yet. Uh, Adam mentioned this player because he pulled him as well, Quinn Williams from the New York Jets. And last but not least, Coop, if you can give me something on this player, uh, that uh, that would be much appreciated because I don't know anything about him. And we play in deep dynasty leagues. What can you tell me about Charlie Jones from the Cincinnati Bengals? He's uh, drafted. He, he was day three pick drafted as a return man, basically. So well, I wouldn't go – or he might have been actually a comp pick in the fourth round. Does it say what round he's picked in? So, yeah, I mean uh, – uh, Fourth round, yeah fourth round i think it was a fourth round in the comp pick territory so uh, he to we we go through all of them at draft time and to me he seemed like a guy that his, his upside is to be the inevitable replacement for tyler boyd as a slot guy it's just if they if they hang on to t higgins and they hang on to jamar chase that's a part-time job but hey you know what as a fourth round pick if he can carve out that role then that's that's big upside uh guys like amon ross st brown they his production as a fourth round pick kind of has everyone thinking that it's going to happen all the time. The best fourth round pick over the last like 20 years at wide receiver before him was essentially uh, Jamison Crowder. 
right? Statistically speaking. So, you you know, and you have to go all the way back to like Brandon Marshall. I know there's been hits in the fifth round, hits in the sixth round, but the odds are pretty stacked against those players. Yep. All right. So moving on to the next pack, uh, we start off with uh, Micah Parsons from the Cowboys. Stud. Awesome. Yeah, stud, stud defensive player. Nice throwback card here uh, from your Detroit Lions, Herman Moore. Love Herman. Man. He had some monster seasons, bro. Like re- yeah. the stats don't even make sense when you look like 200 target seasons. He was the big man receiver before that was really a common thing. Well, I think he was like six, four or something like yeah. that. Like he was a big boy and he, you know, Rodney Pete made use of him for sure. Yep. These stats uh, don't even make sense. Uh, here's another player who will probably have a new coach next season. Justin Herber from the LA chargers. Yeah, that's yeah, you want to load up. I feel like you got to is it in the card market. Is it, is it, is it really possible to buy low or are people, are they people ahead of the curve on that stuff to buy low on what? Like players like, like se- secondary markets. Like yeah. Like, like the, like you say, you go out and get Herbert. They say that cause he's already statistically speaking, right? If you take all the quarterbacks all time in the NFL and sort them by fantasy points, right? Per game. Justin Herbert is a top five quarterback all time. He just has not been much of a winner and you know, his, his it's been frustrating, but technically speaking, the guy puts up the numbers. It's just not always flashy. Like if he gets a new, if he gets a new coach, he could potentially be one of the best guys in the league. Like do those cards jump in value you see, or does it kind of more of people are kind of already uh, building in the possibility into the price that that could happen. I don't know. That's a good question. There's a lot of factors here. I think, um, for one, the Chargers are not exactly a, a glamorous team. I mean, I feel like if it was like a you know like a traditional blue blood like the Cowboys or the Steelers, that there might be a little something to that. I don't know. It's, it's a weird situation because, like, I mean, I I know it's cliche to say a Chargers going to Charger. Like that's like right. they find ways to lose games. Like you know, Phil, Phil Rivers is the same. He's basically the modern day Philip Rivers in in that respect. Like he puts up all the stats, and you know the team doesn't win, and you know it's. I don't want to say it's not Justin Herbert's fault. He yeah, obviously shares some accountability in that, but I think a lot of it is just, you know, the defensive head coach they hired who uh, has a defense that stinks despite the fact that they have, like, you know, three or four all pros in that D. Yeah, it's such an un- underrated point regarding the Blue Bloods in that, like, if you ask any of these coaches, like, what their dream job is, they always say it's the same teams, right? Like, right. they always they want, want to – co- the Giants, right? They want to coach the Giants and they want to coach right. the Cowboys and they want to coach the 49ers. The Cowboys the franchises. Right. And right. it's like they, they don't care that this team is loaded with stars and this other team has Daniel Jones. It's all it's right. like it's a weird thing amongst coaches, right? It's I mean, it's one of 32 jobs, but nobody grows up saying, you know what? I want to work for the Spanos family and coach the Los <laughs> Angeles Chargers. Nobody ever it's said true. that. That's the truth. It's true, man. It is crazy. Uh, it's like this. Uh, uh, so mm-hmm. an interesting rookie card here, and uh, I'm very uh, happy to pull this one uh, from your uh, Las Vegas Raiders, Aiden O'Connell. So right now Julian. he's a starting quarterback. So, uh, you know, getting a starting quarterback rookie card, you know, there's a little bit of value in that. I don't know how long he's going to hold that job, though, just because he hasn't been very good with it. And I mean, I don't know if Antonio Pierce is going to be the long term head coach. I don't know if, uh, you know, even if he keeps a job, they're probably going to look to upgrade the position. So. Still worth a shot, though. I mean, look at the, yeah. the the price on Brock Purdy cards. I even I know that they went from nothing to being highly sought after. Well, that's what, that's what you're talking about. We're jumping the market right there. You got an Aiden O'Connell. Okay, he comes and somehow he's the quarterback next year, and he comes out and sets the world on fire. That's like, and that was even something that Jared went back when we had a uh, Corey Nando and friends. We actually talked about the Brock Purdy rookie card on a show the week. The first week he got in there, you remember? I don't know if you remember that because I we think couldn't I even find the Brock Purdy cards because I don't think they made them for like yeah. Nini line. Right. I think the only person, I think the only place that had them was like uh, what was like Leaf, like yeah, companies like that. Did Nando uh, bring up his stupid garbage pail kids cards? Yeah, I still have uh, uh, Winnie the Pooper. I just somewhere. came across one the other day. That was like, <laughs> I have my Pooper. Winnie. I have my Winnie the Pooper uh, in my. It's in my other room. But I, I actually have, have a Winnie. pack of uh, Garbage Pail Kids stickers in there, so we could open that later. Nice. Um, uh, but uh, finishing this pack, yes, uh, I have one too. I got It's in my. Uh, it's in the other room right now. <laughs> Who I saw uh, it the other day. Uh, Raiders legend Tim Brown. Very oh, nice. Uh, uh, Great dude. 
Very nice card there. And uh, Derek Henry Thunder Lane card to close out this pack. I like that. Oh, nice. I got a. Yeah. So I told you that I opened a pack the other day, uh, one of these, just to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, mostly because I, I wanted to open it. Yeah, I got a uh, Derek What'd Henry. Well, so it's, it, it's one just like yours. The other one you got, the touchdown one with the big head. So I got the mm -hmm. Derrick Henry touchdown oh. master with the – and, yeah, so it looks like they all have the big head because he's got the big head there too. Very nice. Uh, well, good news here is uh, we now have multiple shots at winning the kid reporter because I just pulled another one of those. It's oh, all so they're not that hard to pull. <laughs> you got me, dude. I was two in the spot. to take me. <laughs> oh, yeah, now we can double up, dude. All right, wow. uh, so we start this uh, pack out with some legends here. We got uh, Phil Sims from the New York Giants. Nice. That's one I feel like I could just drive down to Franklin Lakes. I feel like if I texted Phil, he'd probably just sign it for me. Yeah, like, yeah just let me know when you're in the driveway. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure security won't escort me off the premises. And uh, legend from uh, your New England Patriots, Ice Cold Teddy Bruski. Oh, that's my boy, dude. That's one of the few guys I've met a couple times in person. Really good guy. He's He lived in the neighborhood uh, where me and my buddies would always hang out and do like and go uh, trick-or-treating and stuff, dude. Just great guy, man. So nice. yeah, Teddy Bruski, good guy. Uh, Terry McLaurin from the Washington Commanders. Nice base yeah. card there. Kind of wish uh, the team was a little bit better. I feel like uh, they're not quite up to his standard. Uh, rookie card here, uh, DeMarvion Overshawn from the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know if uh, you have a word or two about him, Coop. But he got I hurt really before the season, correct? Got hurt. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. But so next we didn't really year. See him. Next year. Uh, very nice American theme card here. National Pride Jamar Chase card. Ooh, wow, look at that. Yeah, nice little stars and stripes there. That's Jamar, uh, Jamar Chase, too, baby. That's a badass card right there. I like that one. Display that one on the 4th of July. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, uh, another one from the New York Giants. Uh, it's funny, they didn't win the Super Bowl until after he retired, but uh, Tiki Barber. Tiki, dude. He got to nice. a Super Bowl one year. He didn't. Yeah. Uh, that Ravens. You know, they, they uh, the, the, yeah, the, the Super Bowl 35, the one they the got game was over like within five minutes, but yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The, the the Giants ran the kickoff back. Uh, Ron Dixon ran, uh, ran uh, the kickoff back for the touchdown to give him false hope. And then uh, uh, Jermaine Lewis was just like, nope, you're not winning this game. <laughs> ran down the field. Yeah. He, had, he had an RB1 overall season in fantasy football one year. I was Tiki? going through and looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Probably in like 2004, 2005 ish, somewhere around yeah. there. Yes, when he he uh, got over he the stopped fumble. fumbling. He stopped fumbling. He had the big fumbling issue, and then yeah. he f he figured it out, stopped fumbling, and then one year just had his his career season. Uh, I, I forget the numbers now, but I remember going through recently looking at it man, and being like, you know what, I do remember that year. Like I didn't remember him being as good as as the year was, but I do remember him having a really good year. So yeah, Tiki Barber, man. I used to work. I used to get to work on his show with his brother, Bronde Barber, on NFL Radio, the Barber Shop. Remember that one? Oh yeah, they had a yeah, weekly man. radio show. Two thousand. Nice he at, at at age twenty nine. So this doesn't happen very often. At age twenty nine, he had two thousand over two thousand total scrimmage yards and fifteen touchdowns. Followed it up the following year with two thousand three hundred ninety yards from scrimmage. Uh, finished uh, fourth in the AP MVP voting. Big year for wow. Tiki. How about that? And uh, I know he's a Hall of Fame finalist or semifinalist this year. He's probably not going to get in, but I mean, he's one of those. He's one of those Hall very good guys. I don't know if he's necessarily a Hall of Famer. All right, here's an interesting card, just because of the the particular team that they chose for this player. So we have another legend here, Terrell Suggs, T Sizzle. But for some reason, they put him in he's... Arizona Cardinals jersey. Oh come on I mean, now! It's like got him Smith in a Cardinals jersey. Got to put him right. on the Ravens. Got to put him on the Ravens. Like, what are we doing here? That's a player where I go back. I was just talking about this the other day. We're like, I have a lot of respect for Ed Reed and Ray Lewis and a lot of those guys, but Terrell Suggs just, he rubbed me the wrong way, man. Something about Terrell Suggs just really bugged me as a Patriots fan. I don't know if I can ever. Uh, I know he's got a thorn on your side. He was, he was very good. You know what I mean? Yeah, and he just talks, talks so much trash, dude. And he had. When he talked trash, his stupid teeth are all over the place. Just I think that's how I feel about James Harrison. Yes, yes. Yeah, like the same obviously. type of way. Yeah, those players you love to hate, I guess. Right, is yeah. Probably the best he, way to describe it. Like, you respect and, them, but 
You can't stand them because you guys can talk all the crap you want about people like Terrell Suggs and James Harrison. I'm going to play nice with those two respective individuals. I've been in the same room. I've been in the same room as T Sizzle. That's not a man I want to talk about shit about. Yeah, that's true, man. Terrell Suggs, scary dude. So yeah, okay, I retract my statement. I love Terrell. I love Terrell Suggs. So definitely, (laughs) we love him. What were we saying? I'm on the show. I'm saying is that you. They should portray him in a uh, Baltimore Ravens jersey. Uh, Michael Irvin from the Dallas Cowboys. Nice, uh, nice. nice little shot there of him catching the pass. Hell yeah. um, another legend here, Alan Page from your uh, Minnesota Vikings. Oh, nice, nice old school picture there. These cards are th- – these packs are a good mix. I like that. Yeah, very nice mix. Uh, another rookie card, NFL debut. And uh, I know uh, you were very excited to pull uh, this player a few weeks ago, Adam. How about Bijan Robinson? Yeah. That's the guy, dude. Superstar. There we go. I, I, I cannot wait until they fire times. Arthur Smith. What's that one you got right there? Oh, you got a Bijan. That was one I pulled a few weeks ago. I keep it close at all times. It's always yeah, right. That's there. a nice one. I always tell this story, but I was in Florida watching the combine on a TV with my family on mute, and we were watching the running backs go through. And my mom, like, kind of watching, doesn't really care. She's like, "Wow, that guy's good." On mute, going through the drills, she's like, "That guy looks different than these other guys." I was like. That guy is different than the other. Maybe your mother should coach the Falcons. Uh, she, my, my mom with the elite eye test. She was like, "That guy's good." I was like, "Yeah, he is." She's uh, she's probably she's probably better qualified to coach the Falcons. I mean, <laughs> probably, I don't know. Did, did your mom ever work for FedEx? <laughs> no, she was a pediatrician, man. She can she, she can tell a strong boy. She can tell a healthy. <laughs> she can tell a boy who's been eating healthy. <laughs> so she's better qualified than Arthur Smith. Then I uh, think so. Cl- all right, I, will, I want to move through the rest of these quickly because I know we're already running a uh, long time here. Uh, yeah. TJ Watt here from the Steelers, Great. fantastic defensive player. Uh, Levante David, this is uh, it looks like from uh, a shot from a game or so. It's uh, versus the Bengals last December, and it just says bang in big letters there of him tackling. I guess it's Joe Burrow. I can't really see who it is on the card, but. Very underrated uh, defensive player. ID, IDP fantasy football players know Levante monster. David's attack tackle, tackle mm-hmm. monster. Yep. Yeah, tackle monster. You know who used to be a tackle monster was Devin White. And for some reason, he just hasn't been quite the same this yeah, year in yeah. IDP. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we got one more uh, kid reporter card here. So it looks like all three of us will get to go. Maybe this is not as big a deal as I was thinking. <laughs> no, dude, I no. Was, and you know what's funny is like we've been opening these panini packs. Like it feels like every week, and every week that has the kid reporter on it. We've never pulled the card before, and I pulled three out of one box. Imagine they then announced that there's like that there's only three of them out there, or there's like five. You just got like <laughs> you just cornered. I market. just got all the Willy Wonka <laughs> golden tickets. Next week they announce like one of five five available ones, right? Like you never know, dude. Adam, I ever tell you I, I uh, uh I was in the the Willy Wonka play in like middle school. You did not. Played, uh, I, I learned something new every week. Yeah, Jesus. I played uh the, the kid who watched too uh, too much TV. Mike you TV. were Mike TV. I, I was gonna I was gonna say Mike TV, dude. I don't know <laughs> what. <laughs> uh, did, right. did you wear like a little cowboy outfit too? Yeah, I had like the little cowboy outfit. Uh, <laughs> thank God I don't have that picture anywhere because because uh, uh, Howard Howard did, would find it. That. Yeah, even if I did, I wouldn't send it to Adam to put to put in this episode. Not call your father. Howard found <laughs> Howard Howard found a bunch of pictures of um of producer Brian Burns from like when he was a kid and put them up. So just just know if those pictures are out there, we'll find them, dude. My oh, mother's not on social media, thankfully. <laughs> All right, uh, Jonathan Ogden from the Baltimore Ravens, Hall All-time of Famer, great. legend. Not much else needs to be said there. Uh, another legend here, Christian Okoye from the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, Nigerian night, nightmare. Nigerian nightmare. That's awesome. Him and Steve Atwater. Iconic yeah. Monday Night Football month. Oh, uh, another legend here nightmare. in the making, Aaron Donald from your LA Rams. Yeah. Dude, having another nice great one. season. Uh, another uh, uh, National Pride uh, Stars and Stripes theme card here with Stefan Diggs. So, uh, Second Diggs of the show. Stars yeah, and strikes, second digs to the show and second uh, American flag theme card here. We love America on the show. Yeah, awesome. Uh, 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 from the Baltimore Ravens, I don't know anything about this rookie, uh, Tavius Robinson. Coop, maybe you have a word or two about this defensive lineman. I actually don't. Uh, I'm not familiar with that player. Uh, there's right, a lot well, of them. Whatever. We'll move what, on. what team? What team's Tavius? Well, he's on the Ravens. Uh, he went to school at uh, Ole Miss. Yeah, no, I don't know that one. Well, I just That's... dropped it, so whatever. That's <laughs> not that. <laughs> I mean, if the three of us don't know who that player is, then it's kind of a deep cut. Yeah, a very deep cut here. And last but not least, uh, Hall of Famer, legend uh, in the uh, gold jacket there, Dan Marino. 
Yeah, that's a nice so, one. Uh, you're going to have uh, tough shoes to fill here. But I didn't pull an autograph card. So uh, you could uh, usurp me there if you managed to pull one in one of your packs here, Coop. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get these puppies going, uh, and yeah, maybe I'll just do the one because I know my wife did. She had to pull the second one out of the the Christmas pile for me. Oh, I think we just, I rest. think we just roll with it. As you long as you're not short in time, if you're cool to hang out for as long as we are, like I'm cool, just uh, whatever. Just I, still just got, I still got a mystery slab to go. Adam still got the starting lineup figure. We I got all the time in the world, baby. Okay, we could potentially rip through. All right, so here we go. Carolina Panthers first card here. Uh, Shaq Thompson, starting with defensive player there. Let me get better. I gotta, I gotta get good at holding these up. You guys are pretty good at it. So, there you uh, go. There you go. There's our boy Shaq, dude. Yeah, pretty good. Again, player. these, yeah. Cap, I mean, defensive captain. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Uh, ooh, this was a great fantasy football player, man. Jordy Nelson. There we go. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. Didn't quite come back from the ACL with the explosiveness, but uh, I mean. As reliable as you get. He was Adam Thielen before Adam Thielen. Oh, my God, dude. Here we go. One of my very, very least favorite players. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will admit that be he's, a Jet. No it's, not a, no, it's not a Jet. It's a current player. And the reason he drives me nuts is he makes my tight end rankings. Taysom Hill. He's <laughs> Taysom Hill guard. I cannot Next. stand Taysom Hill. Uh, I, I honestly, I wish I could root for him because it's kind of fun, but he makes my tight end rankings impossible every week. Impossible yeah, because I. You never where know do you put him? Touch the ball. Yeah, like, uh, how he's a guy. Do every time stuff. he touches the ball, I root for failure. This like, is I kind of a, him to fumble the ball or for him to fall down or or something. Right, and then, exactly. Now I will say this is a sick. This is a pretty cool looking card. I mean, he looks pretty badass on this card. So. Yeah. Anytime a team wears black pretty much head to toe or they have a different coat, but the black jersey and pants, it's always intimidating and sharp. Can't yeah, like them, the Ravens, right. exactly. the Eagles when they wear black. Not so it's much intimidating. Here's speaking of intimidating, here's an intimidating guy right here. John, John Randall. John Randall, dude, with the eye black. I remember he was on the cover of a video of a uh it wasn't Madden. It wasn't Madden, no. He was on the yeah. cover. He was on the cover of something. It might have been um Two, not it wasn't 2k either it was one of those ones back in the day and dude that was a rowdy kind of felt extreme yes <laughs> so extreme, yeah, that's extreme right. two. i'm sorry extreme two i don't want to be misquoted here yeah uh so yeah john randall bad bad man here's somebody that this week hit a big milestone i don't uh, have a copy of that game by the way probably gonna be a i think in my opinion hall of famer already even if you were to retire today but hit uh, Mike Evans, hundred percent, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Hit uh, a couple weeks ago. He had uh, needed 150 yards to get to his tenth uh, straight thousand yard season. Had 162, so he already did that a couple weeks ago. And uh, my God, man, what a star! All right, do I got think, one to uh, before you go. Before you go to the next card, do you think Johnny Manziel calls Mike Evans like every year and thanks him for his Heisman Trophy? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he has to, dude. I mean, at this stage, bro, made him look amazing. And sometimes that happens where it turns out that it wasn't this guy, it was that guy, right? right. But my favorite one is the 49ers drafted a quarterback, CJ Beathard. They drafted him in the third round. And then they turn around and they took his college roommate and his tight end from college in the fifth round. And that happened to be George Kittle. George Kittle. Yeah. So the CJ Beathard pick led them to that spot. All those guys uh, so, from Iowa, right? By the way, there's your uh that's right. There it is. Number. Yeah, that's iconic to me, dude. That's iconic to me right there. NFL extreme, baby. Um, so uh yeah, here's uh I, I got one of those national pride ones of stars and stripes, and it's also a player you pulled. So I don't know what do you guys think. Justin Herbert, stars and stripes card. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty cool for the quarterback. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I got it for for Chase and I got it for uh Stefan Diggs, but I think it's a different look. I, mean, I think it's next level when you get the quarterback. It's a, it's a different look. It's a different look. I appreciate you having my back on that one. Uh, so uh, here we go. Uh, not into any of these special ones yet. Uh, I got the other Seattle uh, cornerback uh, to go with yours. Mine is the rookie here, uh, Devon Witherspoon. Oh, and he's having go. a great season as well. He's yeah. going to be We're... the defensive rookie of the year most likely. So Stepped yeah. right in and uh, contributed. So I'll take that, man. The yes. Panini rookie there. I think if it was a Canadian player like Chase Claypool, they would have the uh, Canadian flag in the background instead. What's that? I mean, if, <laughs> if, like, <laughs> if, like, if it was like Josh, like uh, like Josh Palmer. Yeah, 
but they, but they put the American flag. Like that would be a little messed up, I think. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, they can't make those cards, right? That is funny to think about. I wonder if they do do a couple of those, mix them in. Uh, this guy, I'm not, per, I'm not super familiar with. Maybe you guys know uh, Jaguars Tyler Lacey. Never heard of him. No, uh, sorry, don't Tyler. Really, don't really um, know um, much about Tyler, dude. But, you, uh, you can hang out with. Uh, 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 Marshawn, uh, wh- whoever I just played. Yeah, uh, Linda. Linda's going to be disappointed with me. Linda Elian's on Twitter because he went to Oklahoma State. He was a uh, he was a cowboy, pew pew. So uh, she'll be disappointed with me for not knowing who he is. This guy, we all know who he is. And this is one of my, this has got some sort of shininess to it. So you have to tell me what it means. Uh, but we have a Trevor Lawrence. A uh, little shiny action there. Uh, so yeah, the, that's one of those refractor percent? cards. So like that'll it, yeah. be worth like four dollars as opposed to like two dollars or whatever. But awesome, there dude. you go. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's it's yeah. it's very aesthetically pleasing in the eye. I like them all, man. Like this is like I'm never gonna be personally probably I mean, now that I'm getting into this, dude, I might be getting into it, but uh I'm probably not gonna go crazy collecting, but like I just love the look of these cards. Uh so the, the, we're looking for camo pink parallels in here, but there are other parallels as well. Uh so this one is a green parallel. It's a uh, player I love in Dynasty. It's a rookie card for him too, Josh Downs. There we go. So that's one. Yeah. yeah. Where I look at like the Chris Godwin trajectory, where he wasn't a full time player early on, and then when they moved on from Deshaun Jackson, he got he went from sixty five percent snap share to a full snap share, and went from eight hundred yards to thirteen hundred. I think that could be Josh Downs at some point with like, you know, right now he's not full time with Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman, but I feel real good about that player. Hey, Coop, you uh, want to grade a dynasty trade six weeks after the fact? Yeah, yeah, what do you got? Because I traded Josh Downs for uh, George Kittle in the league. If you're competing now, then you got to do stuff like that. Is that, yeah. It, so if you're, if you're one of the top, if you're one of the top, if you're going to make the playoffs in that league, then yeah. you have to do stuff like that. So I do yeah. like that. Like, yeah, so that's a fit. That's what I would consider a fair trade. And if the other team is competing now, then I think that they might have made a mistake. But if they are playing for the future, then I think it's a fair trade. Uh, here is a guy who's been playing. I don't know. I'd say he's been playing okay, and it's one of the uh, it's one of the pink camo cards. Oh. What do you think? What do you think about this guy? Oh, it's also a National Pride pink camo card. So it's got the stars and stripes. Uh, what do, how do you guys feel about Mister Tyree Kill? Do you think he's pretty good? Uh, Ty- player? He's, he's an okay football he's, player. He's okay. Yeah, he's He'll uh, stick in this league. Player too. It would be nice if this uh, you know camo it, you know camo stars and stripes. If he could break that two thousand yard. This season, the, the season of this card, that'd be really nice, right? That that that'd be pretty sweet. Um, I don't know where you feel about like uh, players like MVP race, like because like he's a guy who probably should be in the MVP race, but he's not going to win it because it's a quarterback can. award. So it's a quarterback it's go award. to an off- it, 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 offensive player of the year, sure, but and also the optics of it because of his off the field stuff. The league has in the past kind of ignored that. And giving the awards to the people that deserve them, and it backfires sometimes. Like people still look at Michael Vick and they say he should not have won Comeback Player of the Year, right? Coming out of right. jail for after what happened, but he did deserve it, right? He was the Comeback Player of the Year, but I don't know the and league. He, I think it was, and he was awesome that year when he was he awesome. Yeah. On the Eagles, yeah. That that Monday night game against uh, the Redskins at the time was one of the great games I've ever seen. Right. So it's like, I think to some degree, you got to look at it and say, you know, do they want that? Right. So um, I don't know, but he deserves it. If he if he breaks 2000 yards, it might be hard not to give it to him. Uh, Offensive player of the year is what award he's probably going to get, though. Right. True. Uh, Here's a guy uh, that never misses time. Always been rock solid in fantasy. Tyler Lockett. And it's one of our pink camo inserts there. So a lot of those pink camos there. We like that. Yeah, I've loaded up on him right now. And not only that, because the, the Tyreek is a special one. And here's a uh, – I got another pink camo hit one here, and it's a rookie. Not only is it a rookie, but it's a rookie from my favorite team. And it's a player I really like. Unfortunately, got hurt early in the year. But, uh, Christian Mr. Gonzalez? Mr. Christian Gonzalez rookie card. So I was going to guess Mark player. I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, we're going to buy these. We're going to do them on the show. Hey, you know, if they're worth anything, maybe we'll sell them. But I'm, now I'm looking at them. I'm like, I'm not selling any of these. I'm keeping uh, that, that one you keep. Maybe you even get graded. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, rookie, rookie card, my favorite team. It's my guy right here. All right. So I got a Jamar Chase card myself here, an epic performers card. So, well, that's one way to describe him. Yeah. 
I don't know what the deal is with these. Is it? Is it? Does it highlight like a? Uh... It's just like a sub series kind of, you okay. know, another wave. Yeah, I like it, man. It's a good look to it, right? Yeah. They're nice. Those I, I like those insert sets. I, I'm always a sucker for a good insert set. All right, and I got my own Thunder Lane card here to go with yours. Uh, Thunder Lane, David Montgomery. So and he has been a Thunder Lane player for sure this year. So yeah, I'm feeling nice about that pack. Uh, do we? Should I crank another one? Do we have time? I mean, yeah, we got time. I think. It. Right. What do you think? Sure. I'll go. Why not? If you got the time, we got. Awesome, man. I, I'm I got all the time in the world. I'm coming on every week, dude. This is great. <laughs> I've been watching them. I watched. I I was like, oh, let me watch one or two because I already watched it in the past. Then I was like, oh, let me get back up to speed. I'll watch a couple, and then I just ended up watching like a ton of them. So, uh, you know, Darren and I are gonna get a text at like you know two a.m. Eastern. Hey guys, you want to record? I got a few packs here. <laughs> I got the itch, right? Have you guys had Impemba on yet, John Impemba? We have, yes, we did. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't even remember what we he opened uh like college uh football cards. He right? opened the draft. I think he opened draft. Oh, cards. draft picks. Okay. That's interesting. He's yeah. he's been sending some mes- messages on the Slack about he is just on fire with what he pulled. He he just he's, he's been pulling a lot he's of pulling a lot of Wemby cards lately. Yeah. Yeah. He pulled the Bronny James, future Celtic. Uh okay, so we'll go through these quick <laughs> with the the non-insert ones. We got a Brees Hall, you know, that's a nice card there. Uh, good some Brees. We love uh, Brees Hall. You've, you've got the market cornered on Sage Surratt. I've got the market cornered on uh, Shaq Thompson base set cards here. So, there we go. Yeah. Uh, this guy, great player, but definitely having some off-the-field struggles as of late with uh, Chandler Jones. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully he gets his life in order. Hopefully he gets the help he needs. Yeah. Yep. This has been a great player in fantasy football this year, no question. Makes my life easy. Mr. TJ Hawkinson. Just Rank Kelsey one, Hawk two. That's the kind of player we like. Not Taysom Hill. We need targets, right? We need consistency. TJ yeah. Hawkins has been that. Here we well, go. Here's a player. Here's a player that uh, – here's a controversial opinion. A player that doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Joe Namath. <laughs> you know, listen, and I understand. Listen, I, you're going on a Jet fan right now. and let- <laughs> I'm sorry. I, statistically, I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Uh, it's yeah, you're not right. wrong statistically, but it's to me like what Namath did for the game, what he was for New York. Like he was, he was almost beyond football. But I agree. It's I mean, true. the guy threw interceptions. Like you know, every yeah, I agree. It, statistically, not so much. Because right. that's the joke, though. The interception, but it was a different era, and you can't tell the story of the game without him. And also, the players have to thank him a lot because he went out of his way. He was one of the first guys to do the um, individually uh, advertising. Right. And he even, he yeah. had like, like the pantyhose or whatever. He was doing like crazy adverts and kind of opened the door to all that. So yeah, he's no, a he's trailblazer all, in terms of, yeah, style and fashion and all that sort of stuff. And uh, he's I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to comment about the interceptions because we're only about a year or two away from Eli Manning being first ballot. So, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, here's a def- definitive Hall of Famer, Steve, Steve Young. Young. Steve the best, Young, man. the best That's left handed, the, the second best left handed quarterback all time after Tua. Uh, wow. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Steve <laughs> Young. <laughs> Steve Young still. I thought you were going to say Michael Vick for a second. <laughs> uh, Michael Vick, it was effortless the way he would flick the ball there. Uh, let's get to some rookies here. Uh, this is a player I'm not particularly familiar with. Uh, Jay Ward. Do you guys know anything about Jay Ward, cornerback? Can't say that I do. Can't say that yeah. I do. We're not gonna. I mean, it's a deep league, man. I we know a lot of players. If we don't know them, then probably not super valuable. Here's one that we're hoping will bounce back. But these cards are probably taking a hit in what their what their price point is. Uh, Quentin Johnson. Yeah, I mean, he can always <laughs> bounce back next year, but uh, that not yeah. not the rookie. You know, you're talking Jordan Addison, JSN. Uh, you're talking all these like Josh Downs. You're talking all these. He did not live up to expectations. I mentioned Jalen Rager in the show. This looks like the second coming of Jalen Rager. Ooh, I'm sorry. That's even worse than I was picturing. That's, that's worse than that. going after James Harrison. And, yeah, and they went rough. to the same school, if I'm not mistaken. They both went to TCU, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. There's been like one TCU player that's been great. Ladainian Ladainian Thompson. Thompson. Ladainian Thompson. <laughs> that was 25 years ago, uh, 20, uh, 21 years ago. Here's one of the legendary. This here's so this is an insert. It's a throwback player, uh, one of the greatest almost Super Bowl winners of all time. Jim, uh, Mr. Jim Kelly. Nice. 
Hey, listen, you get to, to win four conference championships in a row is something. I'm sorry. That's, I know they owe for four, but that is still something. It's oh. better than like it's better than a lot of these guys that like, you know, I mean, how is a lot of guys never even went to the Super Bowl, you know? No. How many did Philip what, Rivers go to? Uh none. He went to the one conference championship game. That's what I'm saying. Patriots. Right? It's better to make it and the, the, that the stupidest argument of all time is the Joe Montagna never lost a Super Bowl argument. It's like, dude, he lost in the first round a bunch. Like, I'd rather go and lose. You know, going to 10 and winning four is better than going to four and and going to just four. Well, that's, four. Th- yeah, right. That's the LeBron argument. Well, he's lost the NBA finals however many times he's lost the NBA. He's also finals. been there how many for four and six against super teams and all this stuff. It's like, you know, again, that's the number one argument right there with the right. Sh- a shout out to Nick Wright because uh, I know that's uh, his big argument and that's my boy. So, yeah, here's a guy. I love this guy. The way he plays, the way he talks off the field. Nice little insert for Mr. Saquon Barkley. Oh, that's a very nice card. We Got might it. have to organize a little trade ski. Darren, yeah, his, his eyes lit up on that one. Now we're talking swaps, man. Yeah, love that play, yeah. man. I mean, I, so- I, got, I got a nice Teddy Bruschi card here. We could easily make that uh, swap happen. All right, all right. I'm in on that, man. <laughs> uh, we got uh, – here we go. Uh, yeah, we'll do a big ex- – We'll do a, maybe we'll all load up on cards and bring them to the expo and sit down and do some trade and – uh, here's one for the tight end whisper crew, and it's one of those camo pink inserts. It's uh, Mark Andrews. That's my guy. Tough, tough, tough loss for my fantasy team. That was that was a big one. Rough man, you know. Maybe there's an Isaiah Likely Campbell card. I, I got too. him back in a trade in a trade unrelated to Andrews as insurance before he got hurt, so that worked out for me. But still, but try to have Andrews. Jeez, and I thought I, I looked at that card now as like because I'm just I'm not looking at these before I pull them up. I thought that that would be the best tight end card in this pack, but then they one upped it right after that with uh, uh Mr. Swift. Uh, that's what uh, I was gonna say. Tight oh, end, Shannon Sharp. Oh, Shannon, Shannon Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. Shannon. Shannon Sharp, man, great player, man. One does, of the best. Pa- does Taylor Swift get a football card next year from any of the brands? How about that as a question? <sighs> no chance they can afford. No, that because licensing. they'd have to pay her a ton of money. Exactly, for dude. Exactly. But if they did do that, those pa- I mean, those packs would sell out so fast because everything sells out, right? Like, right. Everything- and with how devoted her fan base is, like those the. They would be impossible. I was going to say, people are already going to Targets and Walmarts and cleaning out shelves. Imagine if you had the Swifties in on it. Right, right. for now, sure. Now, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want a Panini Prism card of, like, Taylor Swift sitting in the press box with, like, Brittany Mahomes and uh, all those people. And they're just, oh, like, cheering God. on the Chiefs. So uh, I, I, I kind of like, want this card. Celebrities were there. That's the card. Be careful opening that door, though, because now they're going to be mixing in other cards. So for every Swifty one you get, they put in like 10 Jackson Mahomes cards that now you just got to throw those oh, away. God, I was, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, Donna Kelsey card would be sick, though, too, though. Right? The whole series. There. Donna Kelsey. Uh, mom yeah, series. Um, uh, mom if we're series, going uh, celebrity uh, parents, uh, Mama McNabb. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a chunky, soup the whole chunky soup one. Yeah, that'd be nice, dude. Uh, here's one shout out to, uh, and again, this one only had three of those pink cards, so they don't really, the first one was just loaded up, I guess. So, you know, so if only three of the pink ones here, shout out producer, Brian Burns, gotta love and respect Brian Burns, right? Play the dropper for, uh, uh, for our buddy there. So yeah, Brian Burns, dude, I don't really love Brian Makes Burns. great video intros and is a hell of a defensive lineman. So, right. Super mean to Mac Jones, but I guess it's kind of fine to be mean to Mac Jones. Uh, uh, I mean, Mac Jones will be on some other team next year, so it'll be fine. You'll you'll move you'll move on quickly when uh, you know Drake May is the future. And I'll wrap this one up so we can get to your special one there. I got two of those big head touchdown masters cards. Uh, good players though, uh, Josh Allen, for sure. I don't know if I like the big heads, man. I don't know if I like that. I don't like it on that card. Like I do, I do like them, but I don't like it on that card. I don't know. Like Bettis once said, "Oh, like a walking candy apple." I'll tell you, you don't like it on this card. I think it might be, it's even worse on this next one. I, I don't know why they picked this one, but it makes it look like he has no neck at all. <laughs> this is the weirdest looking card. It's a great player again, Mike Evans, but look at the neck. Look at the head here on this. It's, it's like, like they turtle Davis it's Mills' like... neck and went horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably laughing at themselves when they made this. They're going through like which ones of these look the craziest. I don't know if I love. That. I don't right. know if I love this set. Uh, uh, the, the players don't care. The che- you know the the checks still money. clears every month for yeah, exactly. Deposit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's it is a there. 
all these cards look sharp, man. I, I might be a yeah. mosaic guy. These are sweet. So, uh, Adam, you've been paying attention. Uh, who who do you think uh, did the better here with them? I, I've been sitting back you know, a little bit, trying to observe, you know, see what's coming out. And, you know, cool. I love those pink camels. Those are cool cards for sure. And he's got some nice ones. But, I mean, Jared's got multiple chances to be a kid reporter. I didn't get one, dude. I didn't get one. I opened three of these, too. In my other pack, I didn't get one either. So, Honestly, man, I got to see the victory, dude. All hail the kid reporter. All hail. Uh, shout out, shout out young Dylan. You got nothing on me, buddy. <laughs> Dylan's in trouble, dude. Our boy Jared, Jared kid reporter more. All right. So it's time for mystery slab time where uh, we uh, open up a uh, mystery graded card. Uh, uh, obviously, Coop, you're familiar with the story where I decided, hey, I'm just going to buy a mystery uh, graded card to try to chase uh like this Kevin Garnett one or uh, Kirk, Cousins, Kirk Cousins, and then I wound up spending six hundred dollars on mystery graded cards that uh, I'm still trying to get expensed. Uh, so last week we pulled uh, Mark McGuire uh, rookie card. That was a good, nice was one. Very nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is one I'm going to keep because uh, yeah. we love the steroid era here on uh, Rip and Rip. We do. do. Hell yeah, I was, dude. Best uh, player of all time is not in the Hall of Fame. Best two hitters of all time aren't in the Hall of Fame. It's such a disgrace, dude. It's Don't even joke, get started right? on it. Because they were the All only right. two that were doing it. So, oh, of course they were the only two. Yeah. So yeah. we go. Uh, oh boy, this might be a repeat of one that we've done previously because we got the 1990 Pro Set uh, Emmett Smith card again. Yeah, that's the same one. That's the we same one. So we uh, we got a duplicate here. So uh, we are not the. This might be another episode where we open up a second mystery slab because uh, that's a little rough here. Getting <laughs> well, at least you know you're gonna sell one of them now. No, uh, I have a and by one of them, I mean both of them, but yes, I, I have a lot of those pro set cards, right? So and, at, and at one point, I went through, and as a kid, I pulled out all my Patriots cards and I had them all in a separate spot. And I don't, I don't know where they are, so I lost all my Patriots ones, but I had a lot of them. I had a lot of them, and going through those sets, it turns out that one of the most valuable ones of all time is a Patriot card, but it's a it's a misprint. <clears throat> Um, I think a lot of that stuff, like when I went off to college, I think a lot of that stuff, like my, my parents just threw all that stuff out. I, I like think cards, that happened to mine too. Like all my old like Ninja Turtle figures and stuff like that. Like, thank God they didn't, you know, the video games are a whole separate thing. Won't yeah, let them do there, that one. There's a Patriots misprint card that got pulled back. Uh, I saw you nodding your head, Adam. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I just know misprint cards tend to be very, very, very. Uh, I'm gonna patient. open up the second. Yeah, one. open up the yeah, second we'll... one. We don't, we don't like repeats here on a. You know, we, we had enough Sage Sturgeon or whatever the hell his name is, Sage Surratt. Right. So this one, just real quick before you show that one, mm -hmm. uh, it was a misprint Fred Marion card. Okay. But the reason they had to re recall them is that in the background there's a 49ers player whose belt is like undone, and the belt is hanging in a way that it oh. looks like it looks. <laughs> It looks like a, you know what I'm saying. So, so if you if you have that special misprinted belt card, that's actually a fairly valuable card. So right, it's uh, look, it's kind I'll of like Billy Ripken fuckface card. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I have the Bill Ripken card. <laughs> <laughs> I have that one. All right, this one's much better. So uh, we have a 2016 Gem Mint 10 Panini Select rookie card from your Los Angeles Rams, Jared Goff. Yeah, there you, there you go. go, dude. There you go. Right, that's a much better pull than uh, the the Emmett Smith duplicate card there. That uh, so uh, we joked that they were getting rid of their uh, Sam Darnold surplus. No, it turns out they were getting rid of their uh, Sam Darnold and Emmett Smith surplus. And Jared has pulled two different Sam Darnolds out of the mystery slab so far. One a USC, and then one was the was it Jets or Panthers? Was the other one his Jets, Jets rookie card? Yeah. yeah. Well, the Jared Goff talk about a bounce back in value, right? For cards. Yeah. I'm sure if you look at the graph of those cards, it's back up from where it was. Jared Goff played his high school yeah. ball about 40 minutes south of uh, where I live right here. So, yeah. You know, it's going to be interesting, though, because, like, the Lions are going to figure out the same thing the Rams figured out a few years ago. Like, you can only go so far with Jared Goff. You know, I win the Super Bowl with him. I know. He's got no mo no mobility and really kind of a one-trick pony. He can sure deliver it to the slot guy, though. That's We know that. We like that. I mean, like that's that. certainly fine. Somebody that All right, starting line of time. Let's go. I got to St. Brown. As long as he keeps throwing the ball to St. Brown, we're good. Now, starting lineup time, it's basically you get to pick something for me to open and enjoy. So, the, the, you know, that's all this is really here. Here are the rules. 
I'll give you vague hints. There's four in the box. There's no baseball today because I try to theme it to like the guest when we can. And you'll see in the studio audience in a minute, I don't have a lot of Red Sox. Sorry, I got Pedro Martinez. I got like a half a Wade Boggs one. So today the pool is going to be, there's two How do you hot- have a Wade Boggs? What? How do you have half a Wade Boggs? Have him as a Yankee or? It's a one-on-one Mattingly and Wade Boggs uh, sliding into you know, third yeah, base. So he's, so he's half of it. Yeah. So he's yeah, half of it. He's half enough. of it. He's whole, but he's half. All right. Uh-huh. So I want to, if you're going to have a half of one of those, I want to have a uh, Jason Veritek mashing the face of Alex Rodriguez card. I they didn't those. make that one, but that's a good one. That's, yeah. a, that's a really good one. They'll face mash. So the pool of four, we got two Bruins, we got a Patriot, and we have a, the basketball one is not a Celtic, but he was a dominant player at a Massachusetts area college. Now, keep in mind, when you're trying to think the players, the starting lineups are late 80s through late 90s. Okay. Um, you could get like a, you know, a historic guy like a Roger Stallback or somebody like that. But um, so, yeah, so that's your hint there is that he was a dominant college player in the Massachusetts area and went on to be, have a good career as a big man. Um, the Patriot, I'm just going to say, I still think he's underrated or he doesn't get as much love as he should amongst Patriots fans and where he stands in the fan base in the franchise's history. Um, one of the hockey players is the only person to win the MVP award and get traded in the same season. And the other hockey player is one of the all time great defensemen. Okay. Um, so do I pick yeah, one? I that I'm try- I'm try- are, but... Am I trying to guess them all here? You can th- you can ask a question. You can take a guess on one. You can okay. take a guess on four. Whatever you want to do. So we're talking eighties Patriots players, right? Late eighties through the nineties. So very okay. late eighties through the nineties. So are we talking like a Steve Grogan type? That's a little early. I, they might have earlier. one for Grogan, but that's before the era I'm, uh, I'm dealing with this particular okay. player right here. So that's your. Okay. Can I? Okay. Is it offensive or defensive player? Or am I asking offensive. too much? Offensive. Okay. I would have uh, told you position. Yeah. We're talking. Um, it's not a Drew Bledsoe, is it? That would have been my guess. Da, 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 da. There he is, dude. Ooh, he was that. he was awesome, man. He would he was absolutely slinging it. And people forget t- ten years, hundred million dollar contract. Tom Brady was never supposed to play. He just got hurt, dude. So yeah, I, yeah, I know I one of my all time favorite Jets is the one that uh, hurt Bledsoe. If you can imagine that that how that conflicts me. That Mo Lewis, my first Jets no. jersey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like as a kid, like I did go through some trauma there when like they traded Nomar. I was a big Drew Bledsoe guy. Did not want to see him go. Did not want to see, uh, like I wanted. I liked Antoine Walker. Like I, you know, it's like all these things that you know. Yeah, it's, been, did, it's been it's been real rough in Boston ever since. You I know, know <laughs> but, but when I was young, just so you know, I went through the, some tough times. Curtis Martin, you know, all that. Like, but and then it was awesome ever since then. All right, so for hockey players, the guy traded mid season. That was MVP. Uh, I know this. I'm you. You should know this. I should, uh, but I'm not sure if I do. I mean, like. Again, when you say 82 90s, I don't late kinda... 80s, but more 90s. You got to think more 90s here and late 90s. Yeah. Now, was was Joe Thornton ever an MVP? He was. That's the player. Wow. Good okay. job. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That's Air Jersey. We went through a period where we were just giving away good players, dude. Like we had so many good guys, dude, that we just, nah, let them go. Tyler Sagan and. Sagan wanted out of Boston, though. He didn't want to be a Bruin. He didn't like the, He wanted to go play somewhere where he could go grocery shopping and not be recognized. And that was perfect to go to Dallas. Right. So we had uh, we had Wheeler, too, dude. Yeah, Blake we had Wheeler. Blake Wheeler. Yeah. Like, they, none of them were good with us, dude. Well, Joe Thornton was, but like, you know, a lot of those guys. But anyway, uh, so then the other guy's a defenseman. Yeah. It's not. It's not Zidane Ochara, is it? Or is that too hmm. recent? If he was an Islander around those days, good guess, but it's that Mr. Raymond Bork. Bork. Oh, that's my dad's favorite all-time player. I would have got to that. I would have got to that if it gave me enough time. Right. And that's the French version, the, the Canadian version, the Premier Troy. There you go. And who's your guess for basketball? If you get this, this is impressive. I have so a he, guess. Yeah. He played in this area. Did he play at UMass? He did. Is it Dr. J? No, 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 that's actually I, I I wasn't thinking that, and I do have a Dr. J uh, one, but good guess. It's gotta be Marcus Camby. Is it Marcus Camby? Right. Uh, yes, I would have guessed it. Wow, Jared. that's impressive, Jared. I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have got that, even though I knew once you said his name, I was like, yes, of course he was here, but I wouldn't have got it. But 
At least I named one UMass player, so not totally embarrassing. Now, which do we want to open today? Uh, I would say yeah, we leave, we leave the choice to you. You're our guest. Oh, so you open it up and take? I'm going to open one of them. Yeah, we're going to crack. We're going to open one of these bad boys open today. Yeah, the people who can't open them, they live vicariously through me. You know, I'm a football breathe. guy. Let's get that Drew Bledsoe open, bro. Yeah, for the, all the people that, for all the people out there that keep it in the original packaging, let's get Drew out, dude. You're like a fine wine. My favorite, my my favorite, most recent memory from from uh, Drew Bledsoe just a few years ago. The Celtics were talk were were there was so much trash talk with Bledsoe, the basketball player. Uh, now I forget. Eric Bledsoe. Uh, yes, Eric Bledsoe, and I think it was Terry Rozier that was like. Bledsoe, dude, like pretend like he's like the only Bledsoe I know is Drew Bledsoe. And everyone was like, this is great trash talk. And then the next playoff game, who shows up to the game in a Terry Rozier jersey, jersey, but Drew Bledsoe sitting courtside in a scary Terry jersey. And every time they put, I was at the game, every time they put him on the Jumbotron, everyone went insane yeah, nuts yeah oh it was that's, so that good rules. i love it i mean so like, good dude <laughs> i can't stand boston sports in general but it's such a good sports town. right if we drew Vlet, fly drew let from walla walla washington or wherever the hell he is and uh and then oh yeah look Get at him that out his puppy. binary those whatever dude that, that that was the first changeover uniforms that was when they went away from pay, the red uniforms those are some of the worst uniforms of all time bro and here they here, and it's immortalized in this lineup. Right? <laughs> that, I hate it. Why? So if you look look close at the card, why are the the numbers on the shoulders are different color than the than the the jersey? And those aren't the worst ones. They had different versions of that where that were bad, but those are pretty bad, right? I think the shoulder numbers are white because it helped back in the day before you had all these high def cameras. It helps the people all the way up in the press box see who they're oh, looking at. Oh, okay. Because nowadays, like they have what eight K, you know. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So they had some bad ones. Dude, they had the the Elvis heads that came all the way down the sleeve to like yep. the elbow. I remember those, those. are those are bad, dude. Yeah. You went through you went through a period. You went through a, an identity period, the Patriots. And then they they settled in. But it might be, you know, when Belichick le- does leave at some point or he gets fired or whatever, it might be time for a new rebranding. Like it might, right. it might be. The like, I'll say this the red and white throwbacks are some of they obviously, you know, there's a tier where you put like powder blue chargers and like those, yeah. you know what I mean? And maybe even the cream schools. I know people feel differently on it, but if there's a second tier, I personally think, and I obviously I'm a little biased, but those red and white Patriots uniforms are, are clean. I actually, I actually just picked up an Andre Tippett starting lineup in that outlook. So I'll, I'll send you a picture when it arrives, but yes. Oh, nice dude. Tip it, bro. Let's go. What yeah, do you think, that, Jared? What do you, what do you think? You, those, you, those uniforms keep top, top 10, top 20. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I think for the Patriots, I mean, uh, I love the modern era uniforms that they have, that, that they've I basically got... worn since, you know, 2000. The Brady era. Yeah, the Brady era. So uh, that, that's going to be what I always kind of associate with. Uh... He's ready to go, Coop. He's got the old Bledsoe jersey there. He's got it all. I got a bunch of different flavors of these puppies. I got the, the two-toned Ben Coates. Yeah, these I love those jerseys. Like, they kind of look like soccer jerseys, but I like those. They they yeah. had their play. Yeah, they they look cool. There you go, Gronk, classic like look. Gronk. We got the so these this one man. This is like I feel like I talked about it earlier. If you're gonna get a uh, if you're gonna get a Patriots jersey, it's gonna be your first one and only one. This is the one right here. There you go. This yeah. is the one right here. Yeah. So Timeless. the. The red Brady, or if you can find a red Randy Moss or something like that, then that's where we're living. And last one, those are cool. Show. Yeah, this one is one of my very favorites. Ty Law, yeah, there you go. That was the one with the, the shoulder. Yeah. yeah, these aren't these aren't even the ones like the ones that go all the way down the sleeve. I remember the ones that went all the, the way down. Yeah. I see those at the game, and they look insane. You see some old dude hammer drunk. And he's got these, uh, you know, he's got these uh, Elvis heads that go all the way down the arm. It's just, it's a crazy look. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, I, the Patriots, the, the jerseys definitely have changed a bunch, but I mean, they, they finally found the look and it looks great, but nothing will ever beat that old red uh, Patriot Pat look. It's good, man. It's good. Now, now Drew Bledsoe is going to join the starting lineup studio audience next week. Uh, well, he'll have a seat amongst a few other guys. We got uh, Pedro Martinez in there. We got the aforementioned Wade Boggs, Don Mattingly, one-on-one. Reggie Miller, he was unboxed last week, so he gets an appearance there. 
didn't have a Boston Celtics starting lineup, so I went with Ray Allen in a Bucks uniform. You know, Ray Allen, a high, highly regarded in Celtics history. Uh, we got uh, Cam Neely, and then we got two Curtis Martins, just to remind you that he did have his Hall of Fame career with the Jets, even though he started. That's the one thing I got over you as a Jet fan. That's pretty much it. It's all I've we got. Ex- I've accepted it. You guys took Parcells. You took Curtis Martin. You took you took Tom Tupa. You took Tom. You couldn't have left us Tom Tupa, dude. At least, but who else was going to quarterback when Vinny got hurt with the Achilles <laughs> injury? We needed Tupa. He was a sneaky punter slash backup QV. He threw a couple touchdown passes in his day. If you look at that game, go back and look at the highlights. For a punter, he's got mobility. He was yeah. moving around the pocket like he wasn't. So he wasn't half bad. He could chuck. The Jets man. still have a few games left this year. Aaron Rodgers isn't ready yet. Maybe they should give Tommy Tupa. Tom, that will put people in the seats more than the actual on-field product. I guarantee. I would fly back to watch Tom Tupa in a game. Hell yeah, Manders, whoever's left on the schedule. Because, cool. Honestly, I was saying it the other day that the the way the Jets' defense has been playing with the safeties and the touchdowns might be better off just running the quick kick on third down and going for the field field position game. Tupa might be an asset right now. Tom. Get on the phone with Joe Douglas. JD, call Tom Tupa. Please. Bring him back, dude. But on that note, that'll do it for another wonderful edition of Rip and Riff here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm YouTube pages. I got to thank our guest, uh, Andrew Cooper, at Coupe Fiasco, who you can find on those same YouTube pages pretty much in the 1 to 3 p.m. window almost every day. Coop's Fantasy Fiasco, uh, Lightning Round Fantasy Football, Quick Out Fantasy Football, and Alarm Fantasy Football. And then we got Thursday Game Day Preview, and then also Sunday Mornings as well, and on Sirius XM. I think I got them all. I think you did get them all. We snuck that Sirius XM in there. Yeah, I just now I'm just realizing that the only day I'm not live is Saturday. So we got to get, I got to figure out a Saturday show. I mean, me, I'm telling you, this has been a lot of fun. Put me back in the rotation. I want to get back in. Uh, maybe this off season or something, we'll swing some. Uh, maybe around draft time, we'll pull some, some cards. Oh yeah, so, yeah, there we go. Get me back in the rotation. I want back on because this show is awesome, dude. This is a blast. All right, so for, we'll, we'll definitely get you back on soon for sure here, especially maybe around draft time. But for at Coupe Fiasco, for at Mr. Jared Moore, I'm at Pucking Thoughts. We're going to be back with you next Saturday here on R&R on BSN and FA.